Hey, yo. What it did, y'all. Let's get right into it. Today, I bring to you guys a topic that I am unbelievably excited to talk about just because I love crafting. And I almost forgot to talk about this. And it's been on my list for many, many months, but I never really had like the context that I wanted to bring it up in. Could never really find the right timing. But with PoE2 right around the horizon, right? With you know, early access is under a month from now, as well as just a conversation that sparked in the torchlight because of the campfire chat between XD and the Master Roll guys talking about the crafting changes or as a part of the broadcast. Them talking about the changes that are upcoming to crafting in Torchlight made me realize I haven't actually talked about what I think makes a good crafting system. What I like in crafting systems, what I don't like in crafting systems, uh, as well as, you know, other points of feedback, positive and negative, that I've heard in terms of how a crafting system is designed overall. And I thought that would make a really cool video just to open up that discussion a lot more, especially because I want to hear from you guys, right? Like, as you're hearing me say this, you're already formulating your own opinion on how you feel about crafting in arpgs right whether that be your poe only player like i know a lot of people here on the channel are primarily as poe players or you know poe with a good splash of other games on the on the side or maybe you're mostly a d4 player who knows right you have your own opinion on how you feel about crafting in games and i look forward to hearing and seeing some of that feedback right because i just think this is a cool discussion to have now, before I launch into it, usual stuff, right? If you if you like this video, like, comment, subscribe. It helps the channel out, right? If you subscribe, notifications on so you actually know when we're posting here. But most importantly, again, commenting down below. And it's just because I don't really care about the commenting too much for, like, the algorithm purposes. I want the comments because I want the discussion. <laughs> this is stuff that I love to talk about. I talk about this shit with my friends, like, on the regular, right? This is the type of stuff that I live for. So I just want to talk to you guys about it. That's why we're making this video, right? So we have to start from the basics. How do you define crafting? <laughs> um, which I believe we could all believe, you know, say at its base level, crafting is the creation of an item. What that process looks like varies heavily from game to game. And it's not just an ARPG thing, right? In fact, actually, I believe that the largest point of contention with the definition of the word crafting comes from the fact that it's not an ARPG exclusive term. If you're an ARPG only player, you might, you know, think, well, yeah, obviously crafting is like what we have in insert ARPG here across the board. And you would be, you couldn't be further from the truth, quite frankly, on that statement, right? MMOs, JRPGs, CRPG, all sorts of genres have a form of crafting in some sort or another. And a constant across all of them is that they use what I'm going to call in this video, static crafting. The idea being that when you put in the materials, you know exactly what you're getting back, exactly what comes back. There is no question about it, right? Let's say, for example, in WoW, I have my spark or whatever equivalent it is in pre in older seasons. I'm a baby in WoW. I only started playing in Dragonflight, so spark is the term that I've always known it by. But you get your spark, you farm out the other resources you need, you send them over to the crafter, they send you back an item of the appropriate item level with the stats you wanted on it and the embellishment you wanted. Done. Final Fantasy. I send over my myself to the crafter. It comes back at the item level with the stats already prescribed by the game on that particular slot, right? Even in a game like a Souls-like game, for example, I kill a boss, I get a material that I take to a smith that then crafts a specific weapon because I have that material from the boss. Crafting in a lot of games is a purely static experience. You put in, you get out. And that is in almost direct contrast to how it's handled in P in ARPGs such as PoE, right? We I call this dynamic crafting just because I think the opposite of static is dynamic. And when I was thinking about how I felt about crafting with other games, I felt like static was the right word for it. And in PoE or other ARPGs, it's dynamic. The process is all sorts of varied. It might take you all sorts of different amounts of materials to get the item made. It might take you all sorts of different amounts of, you know, resources to get the tiers just right. You know, you might get an item that's not exactly what you were looking for because there's so many different layers of RNG in the process, depending on, you know, affix tiers or affix roles within their tiers or just straight up, like I didn't get the affix that I wanted, right? But, you know, I felt like settling because it was good enough, right? All of these things are things that you've thought of pretty much across the board in ARPGs. 
And that's what makes it a dynamic system. Your result, your outcome is not predetermined. Even in crafts where, you, where we say our crafts are deterministic, the reality is, is that they aren't actually deterministic because of how much difference in cost you could put in into the process of making the item. Even if the deterministic part of it is the part where you say, well, no matter what, I'm walking away with X, it's still not always the full item and it's still not always get, like determined on the cost perspective. Now, this, this difference is not a problem. I firmly believe that this difference is fine because I think the two different types of crafting fit different types of games. When you choose to play an MMO, or most other RPGs for that matter, gearing isn't the goal, right? Your goal in WoW, for example, is not hitting maximum eye level for the tier. That might be a part of your goal, but you aren't even relying on crafted gear for that anyways. Crafted gear is weaker than mythic raid gear if you were going to really go for maximum item level, right? So you're using crafting because you need the gear in order to complete the content, but the content is the goal. You are a CE raider. You are a hall of fame raider. You are a title level key like key, key player maybe you're just a person who loves pushing like 2.5k io like your goal is you want all your portals you need gear to accomplish that content but the content is the goal and contrary to popular opinion i guess crafting and gearing is the game in an arpg it is the game you can convince yourself whatever else you want about the way you play our rpgs right you could be like no 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 no. i actually play rpgs because i just really love the the gameplay of me slaughtering the screen at rapid pace or i really love the boss design in certain games of specific bosses right but the reality is, is that the thing that gets us all into arpgs is the insane amount of grind it takes us to get our characters right the process of putting together the build is what keeps us playing ARPGs. As a result, that's the game. And that's why the dynamic system works fine. So moving on, focusing more on ARPGs, right? I just wanted to talk about that definition difference first, because we have to get that out of the way before we can actually talk about the dynamic crafting systems. Get it out of your head. We're not talking about static crafting. You're not getting here. We talk positively about static crafting in this video because it does not belong in this genre. Now, furthermore, Talking about ARPGs, the randomness is in all sorts of different places, right? Like it, it, there is RNG in crafting in ARPGs, but no two ARPGs do it exactly the same. Just in the four that I've played in recent memory, we could talk about PoE and how it's almost entirely random. Again, there are nice tricks to thin out RNG or things like, you know, well, if I reforge chaos on this ring with an open suffix after, you know, previous can't be changed. I will guarantee to hit chaos res, but there's still six tiers of chaos res. So you're not perfectly guaranteed to hit the chaos res you roll you want. It's just that you know for sure you're seeing chaos res. So you're re you're removing a lot of the RNG, but not all of it, right? And that's the way PoE's crafting functions. Or last epoch where you don't have any RNG at all in selecting your viewer fixes outside of the item itself when it drops because you can just, you know, slam on the affix you want, right? Oh man, this item has two open suffix, two open suffixes. I am in need of resistance and crit strike avoidance. Bang, bang, it's there. But you have RNG now in the amount of what is it called forging potential that you lose when you go for a craft on an item, right? You lose the forging potential at a random amount that dictates how much your upgrading you'll actually be able to do to actually get the stats to where you would want them on that item, right? D4, on the other hand, doesn't actually have any RNG in the part where you upgrade the item. The tiers themselves are just one tier, right? Ignore the fact that my crit strike damage on my weapon has a range of genuinely 80% crit damage, but it is still one part of the selection, right? You roll it one time and you hit crit strike damage, and now you just kind of like cope about the fact that you low rolled. It is what it is, but you actually have all the RNG really in the selection of the modifier itself actually hitting crit strike damage but there's no t6 crit strike damage t4 crit strike damage t2 crit strike damage. it's just crit strike damage and then the number in between better or worse that's up for debate it's just the way it works right and torchlight at least at the time of recording from playing season five ss5 
uses reduced like heavily mitigated selection rng due to the way that prototype crafting worked but it definitely still keeps that rng in terms of actually putting modifiers on the item now, that has to do with some details about how prototype crafting works you don't need to know a whole lot of those details just know that that exists and across all four of the games i mentioned there's rng within the modifier tiers in the sense that like the literally the number right you know you hit suppression on your on your chest piece even if you hit t1 suppression it's not guaranteed to be 22 percent, right you might only have 20 percent, and then you're sitting there like waving your fist angry at the sky because you need to define it right is what it is it happens but that's just a part of the process it's worth noting relevant other rpgs i don't know a whole lot about grim dawn and wilson maybe their systems are completely different y'all would have to tell me about that i don't know about that i didn't play those games now something that's worth noting before i keep going is that all of these systems are built within the framework of their own game. Crafting does not exist in isolation, and a lot of the strengths and weaknesses of various crafting systems only really exist because of the way that the game it's within is built around this system, right? And I really do say built around. In some cases, the crafting system, like, you know, Torchlight is redoing their whole crafting system again to, like, fit within what they want for the new vision of the game. But the reality is, is that a lot of times you guide your decisions in the rest of the game based on how your gearing in an rpg goes so to that end we need to talk about trading uh because trading is not a consistent step is not a consistent quantity across all of these games in the sense that all four of the games i mentioned earlier do actually have trading but they don't not all trading is the same right for example d4 is the only one of those four to not allow you to trade any item that has been modified you can only trade an item in d4 from the floor right you could take the floor drop that you're thinking oh yeah i could turn this into an insane item but the second you start turning it into an insane item it no longer can be traded to anyone else right and that's different from all the other games right the other games have other requirements that stop them from being traded um or just straight up are tradable all the way through. Additionally, Last Deep and D4 do not actually let you trade crafting reagents, right? Talking about, you know, the Uthic shards, for example, and Last Epoch, or, you know, the glyphs in that game, or D4, you cannot tra trade like Forgotten Souls, for example, or Obdesite. You cannot trade those materials. And then versus like Torchlight, you can trade for Torchlight and PoE, you can trade for all of the various crafting reagents, whether that be, you know, you need essences in PoE, fossils, harvest juice, or in Torchlight, you need FE, you need ground quartz, you need whatever it may be, you can create trade for all of those pieces here. That's what I mean by when I say reagents. And I'll loop back to my thoughts on this later because I don't think that this is again inherently positive or negative. It's just an un it's a part of the understanding of that game's system, right? And <laughs> the other part of this is that we need to talk about randomness, right? A lot of pre-context here from defining crafting and how we feel about it because, well, fuck, it's a broad topic, <laughs> right? It's a really broad topic and we, there's so many different experiences you can have with it. And randomness is definitely probably one of the more important ones because everybody says they like Harvest League, right? Or, well, they like something about Harvest League. It isn't necessarily that Harvest League is your favorite league of all time because to some extent what harvest did relative to poe's time scale shrinked down that gearing grind remember what i said earlier gearing is the game fucking up the gearing time in the game ruins the game for some people i would argue a lot of people when talking about arpgs considering how much shit d3 gets for having one of the most abysmal gearing systems in the game right they're in the in the uh, genre that idea of you need something to work towards to grind for to push for and if you strip that from any of these games in the genre it fucks up people's experience that said what harvest did is it removed what a lot of players consider to be unnecessary randomness and that's because randomness when done right is very good and when done poorly is absolutely detrimental to the system because succeeding in the face of failure provides you with motivation with excitement right you get those big ass clip moments where you're like holy shit i can't believe i just hit that item dude and then when you fail for the 
200th time, you're sitting there really thinking like, why the fuck am I doing this? Right? You know, or the classic 1500 alt to make a plus one all weapon and you're like oh my god why do i have to do this nonsense right like you're literally just thinking the whole time why do i have to do this man who thought this was a good idea who genuinely who and that's the conundrum right or you know randomly trying to make a step at the end of a crafting process you got to hit a big annul you with the annul you got to start from zero and you're you're just done right so what's the best way to do all this then? Fuck it, I don't know, <laughs> right? <laughs> if I knew, I would make the newest, hottest RPG, ARPG on the market and I would take everyone's fucking money, right? Like if any of us had a perfect solution to this problem, we'd be rich. Let's just be straight up for a second. We'd be rich. Now, what I can offer you though is my, pers my opinion on what I think is the best here, right? And I hope that the whole time you guys have been listening, you've been thinking of your like ideal situation as well again maybe even commenting it down below so i can actually like see what you guys think is best let me kind of lay it out for you the way that i think crafting in like quotes my ideal arpg goes number one materials trading needs to go um after playing last epoch in d4 i think materials trading almost entirely has to go i will allow one exception in this rule which is that d4 and torchlight do have a currency that is respected as a neutral currency that functions only as a cost and not a use that i'm willing to allow to be traded because it can be used to sub be put alongside like regular resources as well as the fact that in both cases i feel like they are very reasonably farmable in the amounts that you actually need in order to create the item that you want Outside of that, though, I think trading of materials completely fucks up the experience of crafting for most people. Just straight up, hands up right now. Have you been deterred from crafting or trying crafting, just generally speaking, especially in PoE, because of the cost of crafting? Not because of the RNG, not because of the time, not because of anything. No, no, no. Because realistically, you looked at how much the essences you would need to make the item would cost you, and you said, fuck that. Creating create for something like that creates an environment where, because of the usual need for infinite consumption of items in a, in a trade-based environment, you end up with people ov like overly paying for things that they don't really need to do right at a certain point in a trade league in poe for example items are so cheap that it's not even really worth crafting it even as a profit crafter a lot of the times you're barely making six like 10 to 16 percent margins on some of the items you craft just because of how much cost there is associated with the process of randomness so i'm not a big fan of it that's not where like that's not a good idea plus i just think people should actually be crafting I think crafting in these games is one of the best parts of the game. It lets you actively have a hand in your character's gearing progression rather than just playing the game like you play real life. Fuck it, I work a job, I make money, I go to the store, I buy food, that's how I eat, <laughs> right? Like, instead of doing that shit, you actually get to make your own fucking food. I don't think that's a ridiculous thing to say. Now. I do think profit crafting has a place in these games though, and it has to do with the fact that I think, you know, I don't fault people for not wanting to spend the absurd amount of time to, you know, craft items, right? When Last Epoch added their merchant skill and the ability to trade, there were a lot of people who were ecstatic about it for trying Last Epoch because they don't have the time to grind out in, you know, a SSF environment to make these things happen, right? They wanted trading so that they could experiment or, you know, this so they could make more builds easier, right? Just straight up trading expedites the part of the process where you actually make characters and see characters come together so i think that profit crafting is fine i think there has to be some point of friction applied to this and i will explain what i mean momentarily because it sounds kind of contradictory what i said earlier but it fits better under the context of what i'm going to say next and that's because next up is how we actually make items as a result earlier i said that i don't fuck with static crafting i'm reiterating that Static crafting does not belong in ARPGs. The closest thing we have at the moment is Diablo 4's mythic item crafting, which is a pity system for drops, actually. It's 
not actually a real crafting system. It is just a pity system for their mythic, uh, mythic unique drop system that still has a layer of RNG attached to it anyways due to, you know, ancestral modifier or uh, ancestral items, therefore having greater affixes on them. And you have to roll the right greater affix for the build that you want. So that's more of a pity system than it is a um, actual crafting, uh, actual static crafting system. We don't, we don't do static crafting here. Now, this does mean I have some very strict requirements on how I feel like crafting should actually go from that point forward. Though. Items should matter at all steps in the process. And it's not to say that you should keep the same item on from level 60 to level 100 in PoE, but more so the idea of a base needs to have some level of credence at all stages in the game to what is already on the item. I think it's a little ridiculous personally that in PoE, you see an item on the ground, you ID it. Let's say you're playing a LA Dead Eye, for example. You see a nice spine bow on the ground, you ID it, it sucks. It's okay. It's I-83. I'm just going to slap essences on it and continually overwrite the entire item until it comes out to see what I want. That is not good design at all. At all. Straight up. I think every other ARPG does it better than PoE in this sense. In the idea that what you see on the item initially does matter. Because it substantially reduces your crafting cost process because all of the other systems are modifications upon a dropped item not a creation of an item, <laughs> right? In Last Epoch, you run out of forging potential if you were to try to print an item from scratch. That's a thing. Therefore, you can't actually print your ideal item from scratch. It has to drop somewhere. In D4, you can straight up only roll one modifier off of an item, which means two of the three already on there need to be what you want to see. Everything else from there is pretty easy to get on there, but you need to see two things you like first before you can keep going. Torchlight, at least again, as of SS5, you have a limited amount of plasticity involved in the ability to re-roll of fixes or in the upcoming system it seems like you'll have a limited amount of just raw currency to actually like try to roll the fixes on that you want to see right like there's some sort of limiting factor that stops you from just rolling forever and again maybe ss6 for torchlight comes around and i have that exact same feeling about that that i do about poe but We'll see. And it's why like fractured items are something I'm okay with in PoE or mechanic exclusive modifiers such as like the Delve AoE mod on rings or Delve plus one specter on chest. Breach having the defense modifiers on the chest, right? Like that, like stuff like that, I'm okay with because it still gives you a reason that you have to actually care about the item that you picked up off the floor first before you start thinking about the crafting process. Temple modifiers, even for that example, right? Exalted items from last epoch, etc. Now, once we've established that the drops have to matter, and we talk about actually like the making of the item, we talked about how material scrap trading needs to be axed. And it was one part because I think people should actually be crafting. And it's partially because we all know damn well that trading heavily influences the price of reagents when you're crafting. And, or not just price, but the availability, the actual dropping of the items, especially in a game like PoE, GG has said it on multiple occasions, how much they have, like, consider the tradability of these items when, like, deciding on drop rates for things. Items deserve to be acquirable. And that's why we don't, I don't like materials trading. Then, on top of that, and this part is going to be a little contentious. But it's going to explain what I mean when I talk about what I said earlier about profit crafting having to exist, but with like friction and risk on the crafter side of the profit exchange, not on the buyer side, which is that if RNG has to exist in the selection and tiering part of the process, which I do believe to some degree, one of those has to exist. You have to have some RNG somewhere in the process to maintain that feeling of satisfaction. It needs to be in a way that does not feel disrespectful of your time invested, right? It's not really about the cost of the item, right? Cost is malleable. Cost is a concept. Cost is like, okay, like cost is a number in a game like PoE, right? Like you could say that the, the, the craft costed you 80 div, but that's not real. Like I'm gonna keep it a buck with you. 
there is real there are real life problems going on i think you can spend 80 day of crafting an item fuck out of here right you have the you have the luxury of the time to craft a an 80 div item that's that's a luxury of a lot of fucking time right that's the actual cost here how many hours of gameplay did that take you how many weeks of your free time days of your free time did that take up right that's the thing i care about more because you know you can't get time back i can go make infinite fucking divines should i run sanctum i'll just go print some more fuck it who the fuck cares <laughs> right but we can't get time back so i'm very serious about like the idea that crafting needs to be disrespectful of your time it needs to actually be worth your salt to do so and in that same vein where the rng in a crafting in the crafting of an item matters like where it's placed matters a lot to me this is probably my biggest right with PoE's crafting as a whole and i think a lot of people after hearing it said this way will definitely be like oh yeah that's 100 percent my problem there's too much rng in poe's crafting on the creation of an of a base item that's the problem if you want rng put it on the drop fuck like fractured items that's a good place of rng fuck you for nuking our fracturing bomb quantity like our fracture bomb quantity right like that's where the rng should be at we should be putting rng in the things that involve actually playing the game involve actually like engaging with the game the things that don't have a stop to them the things that don't have absurd resource costs to them initially right that's where the bulk of the rng for most players should be incurred right the process of creating a 1000 ed like a 8 to 900 edps bow that should be not loaded in the crafting part that should be more like yeah i just really needed to get enough s i needed to get like x amount of essences and then which that took a little while because you know essences are random from the thing that you get them from and then i needed to drop a good base and that took me a little bit and then we were good to go right like that's where the weight of the rng should actually sit in this game and the other side of it is that i do think for profit crafters purposes you do have to have those ultra top tier items right all of these games have items that are just a cut a fucking buff, right? Where some really nice RNG hit in some ways that you only need when you're going for these really high top end items. And I need to be very clear when I say do not balance the game around these top tier items. These top tier items are the fucking point, right? We play our ARPGs to gear our characters to the teeth. This is the point do not balance the game around that that's the goal that's the stretch right and so on that idea when we talk about poe for example when you've got this insane mirror crafted bow when you talk about d4 and you've got the item with the perfect double grader of fixed roll and perfect masterwork crits right when we talk about last epoch you get this insane double exalted item that then also seals a t4 affix that you needed on it right like those high rng moments that you're eking out percent of percentages worth of improvement in, in, in boe's case it's usually like 50 percent damage but like you get what i mean like you're eking out these insane improvements at an insanely high cost the resource cost to like you know to damage per gain percentage efficiency is horrific at this point that's where the rng is at because the people who are crafting at that level need a reason to craft at that level. They need to feel like, hey, I'm him. I'm her. I can do this shit, right? <laughs> and that's where the RNG should be at, at the start and at the end. Don't give me any of, the, any of this random, I'm going to fuck your item up in the middle shit. Fuck that. That shit sucks ass. Nobody likes that feeling. Nobody. Anyways. This video was way longer than I anticipated, although I knew it was going to be a long one. Crafting is a passionate topic for me, and even with the notes that I wrote myself to start this with, which it's worth noting, I stayed on topic. There's just a lot to talk about with how I feel about crafting in ARPGs and the fact that, you know, I fuck, I've been playing the genre since I was in high school. I, I was like 13, 14 years old when I started playing ARPGs, and that's old by a lot of people's standards from what i know right like <laughs> i've been playing in this genre for a long ass time and i have a lot of thoughts about how i feel about crafting across all games in this genre and i felt like again i wanted to start a discussion uh if you're still listening at this point you're a fucking real one thank you so much for watching this whole video 
Um, again, I'm sorry that I can't really give you a perfect answer. It's like, yeah, this crafting system is actually the perfect crafting system and you 100% should just, every game should just copy this formula and do it because I think all of the games do something different that I think was worth talking about and investing in, right? Like for example, I think PoE actually has a fantastic top level grind outside of specifically the cost of it. Right. And I think that PoE's actual complexity, as I talked about in my last video, is fantastic. I love the amount of different systems that interact with PoE's crafting. Or Last Epoch really put me on to the idea of drops in the game in the crafting process really mattering, right? And an alternative way to introduce crafting resources in, in a meaningful way where you just straight up can't trade them. Or D4, I think with masterworking actually really hit the nail on the head with that last piece I was talking about about the cost of perfection being high because getting an item to the point where you have like one masterwork crit and all the other stats you have on there are right that's really really easy but going for two and three masterwork crits is talking about one in 25 and one in two one in 125 odds and that's fucking sick like i like that that's where all the rng actually got pushed up to right or torchlight i like the fact that they managed to mix a good bit of a different portions of this where you have some of that selection variety from harvest and poe but you also have the you know the cost of poe crafting but you also have the tier upgrading from last epoch like across all these games they've got different strengths in this field and that's why i wanted to open this up this discussion anyways that's a lot from me love kisses thank you guys for watching this video so much also just as a note in the description, Twitch and Discord, if you want to connect with me further, have these discussions, you know, outside of just the YouTube comments. Additionally, on Twitch, on Thursday night, at around, I think it's 9 p.m. Central, that might be wrong. I got to double check that real quick. I'm kind of thinking on the fly for this part. <laughs> and I believe that's when I'll be streaming for the Torchlight season launch. If you want to come through, see the new season, it's going to be a good time. And I also recommend just kind of like trying out the game, but like you'll be able to ask me about it then when I'm streaming. It. Anyways, thank you guys for watching for so much. Again, comment down below with your thoughts, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.